I'm Ruben Reuter. I am 20 years old and I currently live back at home with my parents. Um, tea or coffee? Oh, I'll have a cup of tea, please. Cool. Poor Rubes, what a year. It's been pretty tough, eh? You can say that again. Spending a whole year with your mum and dad. All I want in life is just me living independent and then that's it. And you can't see your friends? I can't see my friends and I also, mm. oh, I, and I also miss my girlfriend. Hey ho, let's just keep our chins up. I've been pretty lucky, but how have other people with a learning disability coped over the last year? And has it been hard for people like us? I love you. Love you too. I love you. I'll hold you. The last lockdown was a bit boring and it was like being in prison <laughs> because I couldn't see Heidi. We couldn't see each other for two months. We would do video chats every night and we would um, phone each other. During the first lockdown, like many people, Heidi's independent living support was lost overnight and she had to move back home. I was living with my parents too. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? So, um, do you think COVID is harder for people with additional needs? I, I would say yes, it is hard for people with additional needs. Because then, um, if they need help, then they can't go out anywhere. I agree with Heidi. Dear God, we thank you for this food. It's been a very worrying time because people like us are six times more likely to die if we get COVID. Well, I was very scared when his mum got COVID. But thankfully I was fine because my sister came round and helped me with my shopping and cooking. I had my heart in my mouth because I didn't want him to go because he's the best thing in my life. After more than two months apart, James and Heidi got married and were able to move back home together. James, man to man, love that first sight. Yes. <laughs> It was the best day of my life. With thousands of groups having to close, it's not just support at home that people have lost. Before COVID, we had about 60 people come here every week and they looked after the animals. They did gardening, woodwork, all sorts of activities. And I remember having to call them and then telling them all they wouldn't be able to come to the farm anymore because of COVID. We're just letting the cows go by. And also this farm is crazy. The closure left many without the support and routine they so desperately needed. First lockdown, uh, I couldn't come to the farm. The support I usually have stopped. But since the lockdown it came, I felt like uh, I was in an invisible fo force field, like prison, but without prison being visible. I was checking things out on people, even though it weren't their fault, by shouting things and swearing, and we'd had to lock all the windows and the door to keep me safe. With the farm reopening, Ashley now has the structure <laughs> he's craved. Pika, April, Robin, Rumble! Helen struggled so badly during lockdown, the farm allowed her to visit the goats. I want to get some foodie foods. Depression fed up. Sometimes I still can't take any more. It still gets me upset and anxious and stressed because it's taking away everything you love. You have to just shut yourself away. Seeing the animals makes you feel better. And I can talk to the goats, put my arm around. You can't kiss them, it's that loud, but I can tell them everything. They seem to listen. The cheeky as well, these Guernseys. Yes, I know when to nibble my nose, you're not allowed, are you? Nice job, goats. I'll see you later. For William, who has autism and is non-verbal, lockdown meant the cancellation of vital appointments. That year that he has missed of speech and language therapy, that's a quarter of his life. That, that could be the difference between his development into speech or his understanding increasing. The family has also missed out on other support. We've had one phone call. We were supposed to get a phone call every month to check 
if we're okay. If there's any help that we need, you know, we are classed as in the vulnerable category and I've had one call and that was March 2020 and I've heard nothing since. When the pandemic first started and lockdown hit, the paediatrician um, who saw William cancelled all his appointments. He's also the only person who can prescribe William's melatonin for him to sleep. So for three and a half months, we survived off one to two hours sleep a night. Is there a glimmer of normal life now? There is hope out there. It's a slow process and I'm <sighs> hoping as things open, we can start doing the activities that William thrives on. We can start going swimming, we can start having his autism worker here again and yeah, getting back to that normal. I think, I think, I think we need it now. For people with additional needs, COVID has been an anxious time. Hello. Hi there. Come in. Cheers. Tell me a bit about yourself. I'm Harrison and I live in Doncaster and I'm 10. I have got autism, Tourette's, OCD, epilepsy, a brain injury, one kidney, so yeah. How have you been affected by COVID? Been hard. So I'd say your anxiety has increased tenfold, hasn't it? You're really scared and worried about who's touching you, what cups you use and what plates you use. You have to have your own special knife and fork, don't you? And your own cups. How's it been, Has? Oh, it's been difficult for all of us, but as lockdown ends, I'm hopeful things will start to get better. I'm looking forward to getting back to work, my own flat and my girlfriend. This is Ruben Moita, reporting for Channel 4 News. I always wanted to say that.